Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I'm the Wildlife Education Specialist at Blanford Major Center. And today, I want to introduce you to one of our Eastern Screech Owls. This is Dr. Who, and Dr. Who is our gray morph Eastern Screech Owl. Because Screech Owls also come in a red morph, as well as a brown morph. But here in Michigan, gray and red are the most common. Now, Dr. Who no longer lives in the wild, because when he was living in the wild, he was living in a tree that a gentleman was getting ready to trim because the man owned the land and Dr. Who was using his camouflage so well that the gentleman did not see him and accidentally nicked him with his chainsaw and this happened in the state of Missouri and when he had that interaction with the chainsaw Dr. Who lost two of his toes on his left foot and half of his left wing. You can see that this one does not come down nearly as far as this one. Missing those talons means that he would have a difficult time holding on to perches, as well as live prey. Imagine if he caught a red squirrel. That red squirrel isn't just gonna hold still and let him eat it. The red squirrel is gonna fight for its life. And missing two of the toes that you really need to grasp onto your prey means that he could probably drop his food. Now, of course, a small owl like this, if there was a strong windstorm, and again, he didn't have all four toes grasping onto his perch, he could potentially get blown out of the tree and then be accessible by a ground predator, perhaps damage himself when he hits the ground. Now think about those wings. I want you to think about the movie Finding Nemo. Do you remember Nemo's lucky fin? Was it as big and strong as his other fin? No. And for Doctor Who, he's got about a wing and a half. And his half wing does not help the other wing to actually fly. He can hop around and he can glide if he wants to go from his higher perch down to the ground of his enclosure to eat his mice, but he cannot actually fly. Now for a screech owl, flight is important for a lot of things, like going after your prey, not searching for them, we'll talk about that, avoiding predators, but also relocating yourself in the winter when a lot of the food that predators eat is migrating or hibernating and you little screech owl are available to the great horned owl at night you'll likely become that meal and so screech owls spend a lot of the time in the winter in tree holes made by woodpeckers but as predators eastern screech owls are what we call sit and wait predators so they literally sit and they wait for prey to slither by crawl by fly by hop by and then they go for it. Now I want to show you a photo of Dr. Who using his camouflage. Isn't that amazing? Such good camouflage because of the coloration of those feathers. And this is our red morph Eastern Screech Owl, Dr. Hoot. And you can tell that there is a difference in that coloration that gray morphs are going to do great up against deciduous trees like oaks and, oaks and maples. And red morphs will do fantastic up against more brass red bark trees like red pine and red cedar. Thank you all so much for letting me introduce you to Dr. Who, our gray morph eastern screech owl. Both of these specimens here are the talons of a great horned owl. Two different great horned owls, but nevertheless. What I want you to notice, first of all, look at that feathering all the way down the toes. That is very characteristic of the owls of Michigan, that most of our owls have feathers all the way down their toes like their own personal boots that they were born with. The other thing I want you to notice is the different toe orientation between these different feet. Right here, we've got three to one. Three to one is a really typical arrangement if I'm walking, but as we know, Owls don't spend a ton of time walking. But two to two, or a zygodactylic arrangement, is actually even more efficient as a bird of prey. Because that means I'm gonna have an even grasp on both sides of either my perch that I'm hanging onto in the tree or the live prey that I've hunted for. 
Imagine this great horned owl. We know great horned owls love skunks. That skunk isn't just gonna sit still in the talons and allow the great horned owl to eat it. That skunk is gonna be fighting for its life, biting and scratching and spraying and wiggling. And so having an even grasp on both sides of their prey allows them to hold on really tight as they're flying away with it. Because if they drop their food in midair, they're gonna lose their meal.